What up everybody, they call me Ice Springs, aka Ice Springs, the man in rapping Chocolate City. I want y'all, you, and you, and you, and you, and you, and you, to check out my interview on ADTV. It is what it is. It is what it is. Like, that's the swag. It is what it is. Just, just say it after me. Repeat after me. It is what it is. It is what it is. ADTV. Bless. How did it feel to be just Ice Prince's concert in England? It's, it's an honor, first of all. It's a it's a dream come true. It's a dream come true, and I was blessed to see the kind of audience I was there. Like it was it was it was heavy. It was live, and first at first I didn't believe it was it was my show. Mm -hmm. I, I thought it was I thought Jay Z was somewhere in some <laughs> other backstage room or something. But it was it was an amazing feeling. Yeah. Yeah. How did it compare to your shows like back home in Nigeria? It doesn't feel too different, you know. Like it's the same love. It's the same. Um, energy, like almost everywhere we go to, you know, it's a, it's it's a blessing again. Like I said earlier on, mm -hmm. yeah. So the fans are still, they're just as receptive, and they still they understand your music and everything just as much as back home. Or do you think it's a bit different? Pretty much, it's probably it's, it, it'll probably be a, a bit different because back home, you know, if you sing, if I if I sing a song that's like in Yoruba, for example, you have everybody singing along. But here, over here, you have like a mixed audience. You have people from Uganda, people from Zimbabwe, people from people, white people are there as well, and they might not be able to speak the language very well. So they're just probably humming, you know, and it's not the same as, you know, people singing the words live. So it's probably different, but it's the same feeling, it's the same sort of energy, mm -hmm. you know, it's the same sort of love. Okay. So, like, it's just mad, like, because, like, a few years ago, African music wasn't even really played on mainstream radios, and it's like, now all of a sudden, everybody's crazy about Afro beats, and it's like, you've been on Choice of Femme, you've been on, you was on Tim Westwood's show. Did you ever think that you was going to have, like, this much love and this much, like, popularity in, in England? I honestly didn't think, didn't, didn't, didn't see it going this far. I just thought it was going to be some, first of all, I thought it was something I was just going to be in Joss. Joss is, like, one small part of Nigeria, like, yeah. To, um, in the middle belt era of Nigeria, but then we took the the boss from Jaws to Lagos and to the rest of Nigeria, and the whole of Nigeria started recognizing who we were or what we were doing, and it's crossing over to the rest of the world now. It's it's we did, I didn't see it coming honestly, mm -hmm. I didn't see it coming. I was, I think it's just um, it's just a, it's just a thing of timing. I think it's our time right now. Like it's Africa's time to you know put the music on the world map. Yeah. Let me put it that way. You know, the Jamaicans had their time. Jamaican music came. I remember, like maybe like eight years ago, I didn't even know any Jamaican artists really. Mm -hmm. You know, but now even in Nigerian clubs, like they play Jamaican music and people are going crazy. The French people had their time. You know, the UK and the US, they've always been everywhere. And I think it's time for Africa to you know join in that train as well. So you said you started off in Joss. Yep. Like I heard that you started off in a group before Chocolate City. Yep. A lot of people don't really know about that. They just hear, you know, all they and they think that that's just that was your first hit, and you just made it straight away. Yeah. So, could you tell us just a little bit about before Chocolate City, what you was doing? I've been I've been grinding for a while, you know. Like I started messing around music in '99. You know, so I'm a bit of an old time player. Like I started performing around that time. I was in secondary school. I was always miming at social events in school, miming songs from Tupac to B.I.G. to Heavy D. and all those people, and. I was. I had a group called Echo Mox Squad. Called what? Echo Mox Squad. Please Echo don't laugh Mox at the name. <laughs> you know what Echo Mox is? Echo Mox is um, economic. Um, what's that? What's Echo Mox? It's some economic something. <laughs> okay. Economic something of West African something. Yeah. You know, it's 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 it has to do with like the military, you know, body of the West African states, mm -hmm. and we chose the name Echo Mox because like my dad was a was in the was, was in the police was a policeman, the other guy, his dad, his name is Jim Miller, his dad was a military, I was an Air Force man, and then Slim P, his dad was a military man. Mm -hmm. So our dads were all like uniform men, and we just thought, okay, what better name to call our group than an like, Echo Mox Squad. Okay. And we were just messing around, you know, performing at, you know, schools, in Joss, and having a good time, you know what I mean? Having, at least getting some numbers from some girls and stuff. <laughs> but then, yeah, the group, the group split, split up because one of us, Slim P, had to leave Joss to Port Harcourt, which is in the southern part of Nigeria. Yeah. So, like, the group didn't really work again. I started, I, I now joined the choir in my church, started singing tenor in the choir. Mm -hmm. That's how I met M.I. and Jesse. M.I. was the um, choir leader. Yeah. Jesse was the drummer. Their dad was the pastor. I don't know why uh, Ricky's laughing behind. <laughs> like, 
<laughs> you know, and then yeah, that's how we we basically bonded. And Chocolate City came. Chocolate City had they had Jeremiah Gang at the time. His you know an artist from Nigeria as well. And Jeremiah Gang and Emma were like best friends. Mm -hmm. And that's how Chocolate City met Emma. Okay. And from my affiliation with Emma, or from my relationship with Emma, I got affiliated to Chocolate City. Okay. And that's how I signed. Now, that song, obviously, that's what everybody knows you for. That song was massive. Like, I remember when I heard it. That was that was 2010, and even now, 2012, people are still going crazy for it in the clubs. Like, I'm sure you didn't ever imagine it was going to be that big. I didn't. How did that that song come about? Well, the song first of all was a was a joke. Like, I got a, a beat from a friend of mine called Saz. Saz is the producer behind YQs. I like girls, girls. Yeah. Like, he's a big producer in Nigeria as well. And he sent me a beat, and I was trying to I was just messing around with the beat in my room. And the first thing that came to my head was she feeling the boy, yeah, she feeling, she feeling the boy, yeah. You know, so I was I was in the studio writing verses to that and Jesse Jags, my producer, my best friend, came into the studio and he heard me singing he heard me singing that and he started playing the chords on the keyboard. It sounded good to me and we recorded it on the on the computer and next thing boom the beat was there. And I, I started like composing the other parts of the chorus. Cause I needed something else to it, you know. So I started humming da 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 came, and I called Bramo and you know, cause I don't speak Yoruba very well. So I called Bramo and I told him this is what I want to say in the song, and we 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 made it up together and boom. So after that, cause obviously that was your first song with Chocolate City, and that was massive. Yeah. Obviously there would have been quite a bit of pressure for you to release another song just yeah. as big. Yeah. How did it feel like when it came to recording your album? Did you feel like, oh my gosh, I have to make something amazing here? Or did you just take your time and work on something that you was going to be happy with? First of all, after Oliku came out, like I was off that, that, um, that, that Oliku P. Like I didn't want to, I didn't want to seem like that was my sound because I don't want to be boxed into one category or one one kind of one one type of style. So I tried to do other stuff. I tried to you know create music that was very 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 different from Oliku. So on my album I have high life music. I have you know a bit of dancehall music. I have hip hop you know in, on the album as well. So like that's Oliku is yeah. Thank God it's, it's such a big song, but it put me in in, in big trouble. You know what I mean it put me in big trouble because the expectations were. We're, we're very very high after that song, mm -hmm. which is a good thing. It pushes an artist to work hard, but at the same time, some most of the, most people wanted me to make a song that would be sort of like Oli Kush, yeah. you know. And I didn't want to do that, you know. So I switched up on them, and thank God, I mean, people are are, are getting where I'm coming from mm -hmm. gradually.